rise in road accidents. The Bear Sectoral Group and Association of Alcohol Beverages Companies, in collaboration with the Federal Road Safety Corps, today launched the Don't Drink and Drive campaign. The chairman of the group, Mr. Jody Borat Bell, says that the joint initiative is aimed at increasing awareness while emphasizing the role the FRSE plays in improving the ability to control driving under the influence of alcohol. The Federal Road Safety Corps and the Bear Sectoral Group partner to launch the Don't Drink and Drive campaign as part of efforts towards improving road traffic administration and ensuring safety on the nation's highway. And a sack where we're like you, now the road safety people, they come catch me, they use one breathalyzer method. They take a catch me, since they begin to get sense, so those people, they give you the drink, the drink, and road safety. Now they come bring this idea of breathalyzer. So we begin to use them. If you, next time, when you see this thing, make you enter inside them. The year is running to an end. And the objective of the campaign is to increase awareness and also promote responsible drinking. And what we are saying is you can drink alcohol, you can drink beer, but drink it responsibly. And if you drink, don't drive. It's a simple message. So we think we have a responsibility because we are producers of beer to raise that voice and to make sure that everybody understands that our product needs to be consumed in a responsible manner. The Bear Sectoral Group also presented breathalyzers to the FRSC. The Corps Marshal Federal Road Safety, Boboye Oyeyemi, says with the increase of road crashes, the need to persecute traffic offenders becomes imperative. Most of these fatal crashes occur between the hours of 1 o'clock and 4, 4.30. So that is what we are focusing on. We'll be doing some checks, spot checks on these drivers. And with the new directive we are giving the fleet operators, now all drivers must be subjected to breathalyzer tests before they leave their various stations. One on return to, they must do this test. Under the influence, at that point in time, the vehicle will be impounded because the driver is a security risk on the road. The advice to road users is to stay a lot and be warned not to drink and drive. Time now for business news on the News at 10 with Kayode Okikiolo. Well, thank you, Gimba, and you're welcome to Business News. Nigeria is now among the top 20 countries around the world which improved and carried out reforms in doing business. And this comes two years after it moved up 24 places in World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index. According to Bretton Woods' report for 2020 released today, Nigeria made improvements by operating a new electronic platform that integrates the Tax Authority and the Corporate Affairs Commission. Other reforms include clearance given to certified engineers to conduct inspections for new electricity connections, as well as initiatives for more e efficient commercial litigation of smaller cases. Now, four other African countries listed among the top 20 include Kenya, Zimbabwe, Togo and Djibouti. The International Monetary Fund says Zimbabwe needs to intensify efforts on economic and political fronts as the government faces growing criticism over its commitment to reform. According to the IMF, policy actions are urgently needed to tackle the root causes of economic instability and enable private sector-led growth. The fund explains that the key challenge is to contain fiscal spending consistent with non-inflationary financing and tighten monetary policy to stabilize the exchange rate and start rebuilding confidence in the national currency. The Southern African nation is feeling the effects of a drought that has hit crops and electricity generation, while soaring prices and shortages of foreign currency and fuel have sparked anger among a restive population. Back here in Nigeria's uh, stock exchange, gains by oil and gas sector component lift the stock market higher, while Axis Bank tops trades list for a third consecutive day as investors take position for the company's 25 copper dividend payment, and that's on October the 3rd. Well, let's get more details from Edith Young in Wang. Hello 
and welcome to the Stock Markets Report. The positive sentiments recorded on Thursday were sustained in today's trading session and was largely driven by Etel Africa and the oil and gas sector, which pushed the All Share Index up 0.35%. Analyzing the sectoral performance, we see that only two counters were positive, with oil and gas gaining 6.43% and consumer goods 0.31%. While that sector's performance is evident on the gainers list, West Seplat and Total top a list of 14 gainers by 10 and 9. 0.09% each, while Cement's company of northern Nigeria led 16 losers with 9.94%. While Access Back maintains a steady lead on the activity chart, as shares of the tier one lender have been the most actively traded for three consecutive sessions. A total turnover of shares traded today were higher as 187.29 million shares worth 2.12 billion naira were exchanged. Well, that's the stock market report for the day and the week. I'm Edidion Iwang. Well, thank you for watching Business News tonight. I am Kaya Deokikyolu.